A new method of analyzing DNA evidence, <clears throat> evidence is cracking cold cases wide open across the country, including one in Sarasota. That's right. Genetic genealogy has solved 20 rape and murder cases to date. In just the six months, it's been used as a tool by law enforcement. As ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick explains, without it, an alleged killer would still be living right in our backyards. It was March 29, 1999. Deborah Dalzell had just moved into her brand new home on Country Meadows Lane, where she lived alone. That night, Dalzell was raped and brutally murdered. When something like this happens, uh, it's a pretty significant event. This woman was a, a, a worker, minded her own business, didn't live in an area you would think something like this would happen. But it did, and for 19 years, the killer got away with it. People expect the sheriff's office to figure these things out. I'm sure several times throughout the years, investigators at the time thought they had it figured out and then were let down. September 16th would be the last day Dalzell's alleged killer would know freedom. 39-year-old Luke Fleming, a man who lived just down the road from Dalzell at the time, was linked to the crime using evidence police had all along, semen that was left on the scene. The break in the case came three years ago after Captain John Walsh of the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office was inspired by a magazine article. I read in the National Geographic's article in 2015, the phenotyping, and I went, huh, I wonder if we can use that. Walsh and his team called Parabon Nano Lab, the company behind this new technology called phenotyping. It's becoming more and more popular, of course, every time we solve a case. Dr. Ellen Graytack is the director of bioinformatics at Parabon Nano Labs. She and her team started using phenotyping four years ago to help law enforcement generate new leads in cases. Phenotyping takes DNA that a suspect left on a crime scene and uses it to predict what that suspect could look like. It can identify hair and eye color, also face shape, this is the composite sketch drawn from Luke Fleming's phenotype, but it wasn't the only DNA tool that led police to Fleming. Detectives also looked at genetic genealogy. The same lab that developed phenotyping can also take a suspect's DNA and compare it to DNA voluntarily submitted by people who are researching their genealogy. In a lot of these cases, we're able to give law enforcement a name or a set of brothers, but this is still just a lead. So even if we tell them it, it has to be this person or one of these people. Law enforcement still has to follow up on that, so they always have to then do a traditional investigation. And that's what the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office did to find Fleming. DNA technology is constantly evolving and could make law enforcement's job even easier in the future. Some departments are thinking, well, you know, if this can give me answers on 30-year-old DNA, it can give me answers on three-month-old DNA. Not only that, but Dr. Graytech thinks in the future, DNA technology will also be able to identify age. For Captain Wells, he sees endless possibilities. It's even becoming portable, where you could go to a scene and, and compare DNA. That technology, I think, will exist, and that's a long way away. But and I can at least exclude people immediately from certain crimes. The sheriff's office is now using that same DNA technology to try to solve the Walker murders. A family of four was killed in Osprey back in 1959. Just Aldrich, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Just thank you. If you submit your DNA to a website like 23andMe or Ancestry.com, your DNA will stay in those private databases. It cannot be accessed by law enforcement. It's only when you upload your DNA results to that public database called GEDmatch that Law enforcement can then use it.